so fast. Before you know it, Lamparite's almost here again. The people of Liyue must have already started preparing for the most important festival of the year, right? Hopefully Paimon will be able to check out tons of great food again this year. Anyway, let's go to Liyue Harbor and see what's up. Xiangling first. Huh? Xiangli? What a pleasant surprise meeting you here! Oh? Why, the pleasure is all mine. As is the surprise, surely. It must be fate that brings us together in this place. How have you fared as of late? Setbacks are inevitable over the course of a long journey. If you wish to share what's troubling you, allow me to lend my ear. There is no need to shoulder all burdens by yourself. You are too kind. So, Zhang Li, are you here to listen to stories over tea again? I had originally planned to set out after this last round of tea. However... However? I had planned to take a walk to Chingsa village and gather some nascent bamboo shoots, which are currently in season. A villager there once gave me a small sample, and they possessed a most excellent flavor. Huh? Nascent bamboo shoots? Why can't you just use normal bamboo shoots instead? Wait, Paimon knows! Because Zhongli prefers the finer things in life, right? Mr. Particular, let me guess! Ahem. The nascent bamboo shoot has a uniquely tender texture and a delicate sweet taste that its normal cousin cannot match. <laughs> An astute observation, Paimon. You know me well indeed. Lantern Rite is almost upon us, but besides the bamboo shoots, there are a few other items I have not yet procured from Director Hu's list. May I ask if you have already made arrangements for the days ahead? Uh, well, we were planning to use the opportunity to say hi to some of our friends, but before we were able to figure out a schedule, we ran into you! Well then, might I invite you to imagine the sheer delight that is a soup cooked with the freshest nascent bamboo shoots in all the land. Generous cuts of pork belly and crisp, fragrant bamboo shoots placed together in the pot and left to simmer slowly for half a day. Ah, oh, you're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Paimon's on to your plan. You just want to hoodwink us into fetching your bamboo for you. Hmm? Why, I assure you, I would do no such thing. I merely wish to inform you of the freshest, most succulent and flavorful bamboo shoots one could ever hope to taste. Oh, traveler, Paimon's taste buds can't take it anymore! Collecting a few bamboo shoots shouldn't take too long. Paimon has got to get her hands on some of that soup. Such fine specimens are indeed well worth the excursion. Very well. I shall leave the bamboo shoots to you. Should you have the good fortune to find some, please share them with me as well. See? See? Paimon knew he was just bamboozling us. However, there is no need to rush. The streets of Liu will be bustling with visitors and filled with all manner of celebrations during the festive period. By all means, go wherever your interests lead you. The nascent bamboo shoots would be but a wonderful final touch to a most exceptional feast. 
What an honor it would be to savor them in the company of friends. We're heading out. Enjoy your walk, young Lee. <laughs> Take care now, you two. As for Director Who's list, hmm. I shall attend to it after one last round of tea. Everyone hold hands. Bamboo shoot, bamboo shoot, nascent bamboo shoot. Uh... Oh, this one's only just sprouted, and it looks super fresh. Pina thinks this is the one. I... I think I'm okay now. Thank you... so much. That was scary. Well, at least you're all right. All thanks to your savior here. Oh, a little girl? Greetings, everyone. My name is Yao Yao. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Whoa, she's so well-mannered. My name's Paimon, and this is the Traveler. I'm Dvorak, a musician from Fontaine. I came through Stone Gate, intending to head towards Li Yue Harbor, but then I became captivated by the beautiful scenery, and before long, I was completely lost. Just now, I was so mesmerized by the waterfall that I slipped and fell into the water. If it weren't for Miss Yao Yao's help, I shudder to think what might have happened. It's all right, Mr. Dvorak. The splashing around the bottom of the waterfall means the stone path is always wet and slippy. You definitely have to be careful. Next time you're exploring an unfamiliar environment, try to focus on what's right in front of you. Don't let your mind wander. As long as you watch your step, accidents like this won't happen anymore. Yes, ma'am. I understand. I'll remember to be more careful next time. Are you hungry, sir? Oh, uh, I'll be fine. <laughs> Please, sir, it's quite all right. I was born and raised here in Liyue. It's only natural for me to extend my hospitality to any guests who are passing through. I expect you still have quite a long journey ahead of you. It's very important to keep your energy levels up. I still have some lotus flower crisps left in my backpack, why don't we split them between the four of us? Ah, what a thoughtful kid! She even has some for Paimon! <laughs> You're welcome! Mmm, so tasty! If only there were more! Having a healthy appetite is a good thing! It means Paimon's still growing! If I'd known I was going to run into you, I would have made a second batch. Hope you're taking notes, Traveler! This is how you treat your Paimon! What do you think, sir? Are Leeway's snacks to your taste? I wonder if they're not sweet enough. No, no, they're perfect. When I was traveling through Mondstadt, I had a chance to try one of their moon pies. 
It had a meat filling unlike these crisps. But apart from that, it seems like they follow a similar cooking process. Both are delicious in their own way. As for Fontaine's cooking, though, it's been a long time since I've had a taste of home. Sounds like you spend a lot of time on the road, huh? I do. It's part of my job. I'm one of the main organizers of the Iridescence Tour. Iridescence Tour? The Iridescence Tour is one of the biggest music festivals in Fontaine. We're looking to expand, though. Our aim is to hold a festival in every nation. At least, all the main organizers share this goal. Unfortunately, it's a long story, so I'll spare you the details. But anyway, so the main reason I'm traveling all around Tavad is to promote our music festivals. But I have some personal reasons, too. Well, what are they? Just tell us already! Let me see. Well, to explain it in full, I'd have to start with a story from my ancestors. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Oh, I love listening to stories! Mm-hmm. We want to hear it, too! Okay, then I'll start from the beginning. The story goes that my ancestor, who was also a traveler, once slipped and fell into a lake during his travels. As he was sinking and gasping for breath, he heard a wondrous tune in the air. They say it was the most beautiful, moving melody he had ever heard. Even in that life and death moment, the ethereal music seized his full attention and almost made him forget the fact that he was drowning. When he finally came to, he found that he had already been brought ashore. Not too far from him stood an unfamiliar woman with an almost divine aura. Once she saw that he was no longer in danger, she left without a word. My ancestor tried to run after her to give his thanks, but although a mere dozen paces separated them, no matter how quickly he gave chase, he drew no closer and remained a dozen paces behind. In the end, all he could do was to bow in thanks to the woman as he watched her walk away towards the rivers and mountains in the distance, before at last he turned around and made his way home. Once he returned to Fontaine, he began to learn an instrument so that he could spread his story far and wide, just like the Bart's. After generations of retelling, embellishing, and dramatizing, people have come to think of that lady as something like a fairy. The stories become something of a local legend in Fontaine. It's called the Lady Overlooking the Lake. People now say that if you go down to the lakeside and play an instrument, so long as you play a pleasing melody, you will hear a fairy lady who is hiding out of sight playing along with you. Wow! Well, yes. As it stands now, it's become a touch too romantic and detached from reality. But I understand the original story and its historical grounding better than anyone else. I wanted to find out the truth of this tale. So I decided to retrace my ancestors' steps and search for that lady's modern-day descendants. Of course, there's no way of knowing where my ancestor fell into the lake all those years ago. So I always knew that the search would be akin to looking for a needle in a haystack. I've spent many years on the road now and I'm nowhere near as fit as I was in my youth. <sighs> The wish that I've spent half my life chasing after has now become something of an obsession. Well, I haven't lived half of my life yet, but still, I understand how you must feel. I'm in too! It's like... Mm, imagine if you saved the center of a lotus flower crisp, which is the best part, by the way, because you wanted to eat it another day, but then suddenly, swoosh, it falls into the water never to be seen! Paima would definitely remember that for the rest of her life. <laughs> There's no need to feel sorry for me. I've made some progress over the years. For example, I've concluded that the story must have taken place in Liyue. Oh, so you finally found a lead? Yes, in fact, that's an intriguing story in and of itself. I'd always known that Mondstadt is the city of song and freedom, but more recently, I heard that the animal Archon returned to Mondstadt for a festival in the fall, and learned that he himself is a patron deity of music. 
So I prayed for the Animal Archon's guidance in the Mondstadt Cathedral, and as soon as I set foot back outside the front gate, I noticed a cluster of leaves being blown in the wind further and further west towards Stone Gate. A friendly local told me that this meant the wind was guiding me in the direction of Liyue, so I followed their advice and made my way here. Right? You get it. I knew I'd find someone that agrees with me eventually. Hmm, are you sure? It sounds a bit too much like one of those fake legends told by those treasure hoarder guys to scam gullible grannies from Jingsa Village. Rex Lapis has returned to the world! Just give me some incense and a little mora towards the travel fees, and I will pass your gift on to the Lord of Geo, and ask him to keep you and your family safe and well. And so on and so on. Don't worry, Yao Yao. We... Uh... We have a lot of experience with deciphering omens and stuff. And anyway, you only got scammed if you handed over mora, right? Actually, to express my gratitude, I did spend rather a lot of more on several bottles of fine wine, which I left at the Statues of the Seven along the way. Oh dear. Well, how about this, ladies and gentlemen? Why don't I bring you all to Yujing Terrace to see Miss Ganyu? I don't know very many people, so I can't help you out much. But Miss Ganyu and the Qixing know just about everything. If you've been scammed, they'll help you get your Mara back. And if the wind was telling the truth, and you want to keep looking for that lady's family, they'll be the best people to ask. But you've already helped me so much. Well, I was going to take some new medicinal herbs and plants I picked to Miss Ganyu anyway, so it's no trouble at all. You know what? It's been a minute since we saw Ganyu too! It should be nice to pay her a visit before Lantern, right? Alright, well, my sincere thanks to you all. I will never forget your kindness. Okay, everyone. Please follow me. <laughs> I'll be your guide. Remember to watch where you're going, okay? Uh-oh. Paimon's out of a job! Eh, oh well. Paimon will just be a cheerleader instead. Liyue Harbor looks very different from when I came last. It's almost as if I'm listening to the same melody, but with a richer timbre and new variations added. Well, we are here during Lantern Ride after all. It only comes once a year, so they always have a big celebration. It's fair to say that this time of year is when Liyue Harbor looks the prettiest. Great, let's go and check it out. I can't wait to get into the city and see it all up close for myself. The streets are breathtaking. Smiles and laughter everywhere I look. It's contagious. I can almost feel the music in the air. I have the urge to start waving my conductor's baton. <laughs> I'm glad that you're enjoying the city. here. What a nice surprise. Hello, Xinyan. 
Let me introduce some new friends. They are... Traveler Paimon and Mr. Dvorak, right? <laughs> I've known them all for quite a while. <laughs> when I was last here to advertise a Liwe stop for the Iridescence Tour, Xin Yen was one of the few people willing to give me the time of day. Well, feels like I've been chasing this Iridescence Tour bandwagon halfway around the world, but I keep getting stood up. What's going on, Mr. Dvorak? Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Xin Yen. We've had a string of terrible luck recently, and every time we've tried to put on a show, something or other has come up to stop our plans from materializing. Is that right? Hmm, I guess it can't be helped. So, what brings you to Leoy Harbor at this time of year anyway? Thinking of putting on a music festival during the Lantern Rite celebrations? A Lantern Rite music festival? Yes, please! No, uh, I'm actually here on personal business this time. Oh, so no Lantern Rat Music Festival? I mean, that's not just up to me. Hosting a music festival takes a lot of funding and personnel. Moreover, I've never worked with the Leeway authorities before. Even if I were to start putting something together right now, I think it'd be too rushed. Wait, but we're going to meet the Leeway Qixing, aren't we? And they're the ones in charge. Uh-huh, that's right. Miss Kuching and Miss Ningguang can make anything happen. You mean... what? <laughs> this is the perfect opportunity! Well, sure, it might not work out, but it can't hurt to bring it up as a suggestion. That's the spirit! See, even the Traveler agrees with me. Mr. Dvorak, don't let yourself be put off by the fact that a few things haven't worked out recently. As for the performers, I can put you in touch with some local artists. My friend Yunjin is a well-known opera singer in Liyue. With her support and a commissioned song from the Yunhan Opera Troupe, we should be able to get something going. But what about you, Xinyan? Are you just going to sit this one out? <laughs> what do you take me for? If we actually manage to make the Iridescence Tour Lantern Rock Grand Concert a reality, you think I'd let anyone else perform the opening act? Wow! There's that rock and roll spirit! <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Dvorak? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'll give it a shot. But the opening act is not something to be chosen lightly, Shinyan. I will judge your work by the strictest of standards, so please make sure you are fully prepared. Are you kidding? I thought you'd never ask! Whew, guess my shopping time's getting cut short. I'm gonna head back right away and start working on this. Yao Yao, if you run into your senior on the way to the Qixing, please send her my regards. Okay, I promise I will. Good luck with your music, Xinyan. You've got this, Xinyan! So about the senior of yours Shinya mentioned just now. Is that anyone we know? Yes, it's Xiangling. She's mentioned you two before. Xiangling's always thinking about cooking. Whenever she gets scrapes or burns, she just leaves them to heal by themselves. She definitely needs someone around her to look after her. I know you must have looked out for her a lot too in the time you've known her. So. Thank you for that. Calm down now, dear. I'm not about to run off anywhere. I'm not a bundle of energy like you. I haven't seen you in days, Master. I've missed you. Oh, bless you, Yao Yao. You do say the sweetest things. Ah, look who it is. Visiting friends during the Lantern Rite, are we? You're half right, Madam Ping. 
We were also trying to help out Mr. Dvorak over here. We were on our way to take him to see the Chishing. Uh, hello, ma'am. I am a musician from Fontaine and an organizer of the Iridescence Tour. I don't suppose you've heard of it. Master, Master! The Iridescence Tour is a super famous music festival! Oh, <laughs> an old lady like me wouldn't know much about that sort of thing. A music festival, you say? <laughs> it sounds terribly exciting. Oh, right! Madam Bing, how would you feel about that? You're an elder of Liyue, and you know all about Liyue's cultural traditions. Hearing your thoughts would definitely help us figure out how best to approach it. For example, do you think it might be a bit too modern, or is there any other issue? Why, not at all. Music pays homage to history and culture, and it can also be a bridge between different civilizations. Times change, and the music enjoyed by the youngsters of today is no doubt very different from the tunes I was accustomed to in my youth. <laughs> Nevertheless, all fine things in life can be appreciated. And so, I look forward to it immensely. Hear, hear! I do believe that, my own dear grandmother aside, you are the wisest old lady I've ever met. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you're all being suspiciously sweet today. Yao Yao, whatever have you been feeding them? Master, you're in such a great mood today. You're even cracking jokes with the rest of us. Oh, well, I'm sure you must have plenty to be getting on with, yes? Run along now. Don't let me hold you up. You mustn't be afraid to try new things. If you never try, you'll never know. With your contribution, I'm sure this year's Lantern Rite will be a most spectacular one. with the Ministry of Civil Affairs, please remind them that the festivities are not an excuse to procrastinate their work. Understood, Miss Ganyu. I'll take my leave now. Ganyu! What brings you here, Yao Yao? I've brought all the medicine you asked me to pick for you. Oh, and here's a pack of sweet flower seeds as well. Uh, also, also, these dried chingshin leaves make a great pot of tea that's very good for you. I know you've had a lot to deal with at work recently, but you shouldn't push yourself too hard. If you're not careful, you'll end up falling asleep in the grass again. Well, this is weird. It's like a responsible younger sister talking to their disorganized older sister. Ah. Uh, ahem. <clears throat> Thank you, but Paimon's criticism is quite valid. I do have a tendency to neglect matters outside of work, and that's something I should improve on. Oh, my apologies. I don't believe we've been introduced. Ah! Paimon will do the honors! to make this happen. Oh? Well, the Lantern Rite is the most important festival of the year. 
Our celebrations must not only be visually spectacular, but also appeal to the taste of Leoa citizens from all walks of life. The Iridescence Tour is relatively unknown in Leoa. It's difficult to predict how a brand new show will be received. It would be quite risky for us to bet everything on this one music festival. Ah, <sighs> all very valid points. I completely understand. Therefore, we will not replace or cancel any of our pre-existing program. However, I will submit a proposal requesting to put the Iridescence Tour special performance as the final act of this year's festivities. Some live music will certainly add to the festive atmosphere on the night of the Lantern Rite. As for the venue... Hmm... Let's reserve a space at the docks. Yes, my thoughts precisely. Now I just need to take some time to give this proposal some polish. As long as I clearly lay out the pros and cons, and highlight the key points of the proposal, given that Ping and the Traveler have both given the idea their blessing, I'm confident that Qixing will be sure to give it serious consideration. Mr. Dvorak, I will need to discuss with you the number of musicians who will be coming to Liyue, as well as their catering and accommodation requirements. Oh, yes, certainly. Let's step to the side and discuss further. As soon as there's work to do, Ganyu's as diligent as ever. I couldn't agree more. Master once said that everyone has things that they are good at and things that they are less good at. So, with that in mind, Ganyu shouldn't feel compelled to become perfect at absolutely everything. I'm good at taking care of people, so that can be left to me. Wow. Hey, Yoyo, -Yo, can you take care of Paimon too? Paimon's getting hungry again. I'm afraid my backpack's empty now, but if you let me know what you like, I can bring you some of your favorite dishes next time we meet. Apart from lotus flower crisps, what else do you like? Anything sweet, and anything that's made from slimes! <laughs> Here's what I've drafted so far. Anything else you want to add? No, this is excellent. I'm racking my brains, but I don't think you've missed a single thing. Perfect. Then we'll leave it as is. I'll go make an official copy. Oh, perfect timing. We were just wrapping up our discussion here. Not at all. Every second counts for a complex proposal such as this. I will inform the Qixing of this development immediately. Please give me a moment to pass on the message. Yao Yao, thank you for bringing my herbs. I will make sure to take them. Remember to make tea from them first, Ganyu. You mustn't just chew them raw. Uh, I... I will. Okay, I should be getting back. If Yao Yao stays out for too long, Mom and Dad will be worried sick. Everyone, I'm sure that the music festival will go off without a hitch, so don't worry. And in case I don't see you before, I wish you all a very happy Lantern Rite! Thank you, Yao Yao. Happy Lantern Rite to you, too. We should go get dinner together sometime! That lady I just talked to, Ganyu? She really thinks of everything. It got me wondering, could it be that all our failed attempts so far have been down to our failure to properly prepare for different contingencies? Everyone hold hands! Traveler, Paimon, and Mr. Dvorak. Call me Kuching. Ganyu has brought me up to speed on everything. I'll get straight to the point. 
The Qixing have approved Ganyu's proposal. Over the next few days, I will be working with Mr. Dvorak on behalf of the Qixing to facilitate the organization of this concert. Yay! That's awesome! <laughs> Please. The Qixing have a duty to deal with matters such as these. We have merely moved things forward to the next step. On a more personal note, I am an avid supporter of all things new and innovative. As such, it is my privilege to work with you on this exciting project. Thank you so much, Kuching. I'd become quite discouraged after our recent failures and was expecting the same outcome once again, so I didn't dare to get my hopes up. <sighs> Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined this going so smoothly. It's like a dream come true. Right. Time for me to call in the performers. To stage a concert at a high-profile event like this is a rare opportunity. We'll make sure it's a night to remember. Yes! Our music band's finally getting fired up! Yes, indeed. I know exactly what I'm doing from here. For a musician, music will always be the language they are most fluent in. Oh, that. Well, that can wait for another time. Oh. Can you? What's wrong? They told me all about Mr. Dvorak's situation, but I was so engrossed in drafting the proposal that I forgot all about it. Oh, that's quite all right. I, I don't even know what the person I'm trying to find looks like, so it was always going to be a long shot. But don't worry about me, Ganyu. Your time and energy are needed elsewhere. I, I'm sure you already have plenty to deal with between this concert and everything else going on during the Lantern Rite. Thanks. It was just that I had a few initial thoughts when I heard your story. For instance, I wonder if this lady your ancestor met might have been an adeptus. What do you think? To tell you the truth, Mr. Dvorak, I am somewhat related to the Adepti myself. I am part human and part Chilin. The Chilin is an illuminated beast. I know how important your quest to get in touch with your roots must be to you, because I've been there myself before, trying to find out where I belonged. Did you say the Adepti? And your illuminated beast? Part Chilin? Are you telling me all the rumors of the Liyue Adepti are real? So it's not just artistic license? You bet they're real! Trying to track them down is tough, though. Like Julian Karst itself. There's nothing specifically stopping you from going there, but getting in and out of there is quite an ordeal. Yes. Anyway, if you're looking to uncover a lost melody or shine light on a forgotten aspect of Leo's cultural history, I'm probably not the best person to ask. But if it's a person you're looking for, then I just might be able to help. I see. I think I understand the situation now. In that case, Ganyu, shall we divide the work between us? Yes, that was also my thought. Great. So Mr. Dvorak and I will concentrate on things here in the city to make sure the concert goes according to plan. In the meantime, Ganyu will reach out to our network and try to find the person he's looking for. How's your workload at the moment? Will you be able to make time? I can probably get through everything in... two days. As long as I don't sleep. Wait, what do you mean, as long as I don't sleep? Even for someone with illuminated beast blood in their veins, working for such an extended period without a break will take its toll on your health. Somehow that does not sound persuasive coming from Kuching. Be it but three moons from the start, he who returns is not he that departs. Hmm. Even I know the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance. In that case, three days. All right, I can work with that. If you have the time, would you join me for this search? You're well known to many of the Adepti and respected among the people. I'll feel much more at ease with your company. Okay, then let's meet back here in three days. Watch this space, Mr. Dvorak. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're all so helpful and kind. I, I really... I just... <sighs> just think. Imagine if we found the Adeptus Lady or one of her descendants and got them to come to the performance. Wouldn't that be amazing? 
It'd be such a happy reunion. And that's exactly what this festival's all about. You're right. Okay, I'm gonna pull out all the stops to make this lantern ride a true extravaganza. We should probably get going. Mr. Dvorak, could you come with me to confirm the site? Ooh, we're coming to you! I was wondering, what are your thoughts on music? What does it mean to you? Uh, music sounds nice? <laughs> Truth be told, the question of what music means to people is one that I've been pondering for quite some time. Let's revisit this question after the concert. What is it? Per Lady Ningguang's orders, I've been gathering intelligence outside of the city with the goal of uncovering and dispatching any trouble ahead of the festival. I am told that a strange melody was heard somewhere along the coast. I was wary of investigating further on my own, so I was just on my way to report this incident to Lady Ningguang. But I'm worried that if we don't act right away, we may miss the window of opportunity to take appropriate action. I understand. In that case, I... Yeah, Kuching. You're busy enough as it is. There's a ton of different things in the city that needs your attention. Leave it to us. Don't worry. Whatever it is, we'll definitely be able to handle it. Uh, well, he will handle it. With the Traveler on the case, it's as good as dealt with. Thank you. This will be a great help. I will inform Lady Ningguang about the situation. Once it's resolved, please come and find me again at Yujing Terrace and let me know. Will do! And say hi to Ningguang for us! You have my thanks, too. Stay safe and come back as soon as you're finished. Good luck. Rises. She said she'll reach out to the Yunhan Opera Troupe? Huh, I see. Then I'll arrange for a rehearsal venue and accommodation as soon as possible. Everything should be ready tonight. Many thanks, Kaching. <laughs> you know, I once heard someone from Liyue describe a person as swift as lightning and agile as the wind. At the time, I thought it was a curious expression and I had a hard time piecing together a mental image of such a person. But now, having seen Kuching in action, I honestly can't think of any other way to describe it. It's such a vivid and expressive phrase, a testament to the richness of Liyue's culture. You're too kind, Mr. Dvorak. I see everything! Just wondering who in their right mind would come out to a place like this. So, it's you two. Paimon? <sighs> How'd you sneak up on us like that? You nearly gave Paimon a heart attack! You look pretty alive to me. Can't have spooked you that bad. You... you... Uh, fair enough. Ah, you're here for that too? Saves me a bit of explaining. 
Come with me. I've already reconned the perimeter, so we should be safe. Pretty good condition, though. It can't have been too long ago that someone was last living here. The doors and the windows are all fine, so there definitely wasn't a break in. This place is completely empty. There's nothing valuable left here at all! Hmm... How strange! It looks like it's been looted, except for the fact that there's no sign of a struggle! The bad guys could have sneaked in while the owner was gone, but... Then how do you explain why the door and windows are intact? Seems you've done a pretty thorough inspection. So, any theories on what might have happened here? Daylon, you didn't hide some of the evidence from us on purpose, did you? Why would I make this more difficult for you? We're on the same side here. Okay, well... Paimon gives up then. Paimon's got nothing. What about you? Give up as well? Your instincts are pretty good. Hmm... Or perhaps it's not instinct. The strange melody is one of the few pieces of information you have available, after all. Let me share a folk story with you. A long time ago, there used to be a group of bandits in the Liyue countryside who would sound a horn every time they were about to raid a village. But it wasn't a rallying cry to rouse their fellow men. It was a disconcerting tune, meant to intimidate the weak and warn them of their impending doom. To escape with their lives, the villagers would abandon their homes and flee overnight, taking only their most valuable belongings with them. Everything else was left behind. The bandits were eventually brought to justice, but the fear and trauma remained in the villagers' hearts. Whenever they heard that melody, they would feel like their lives were in danger once again, and flee immediately. The culprit of this crime exploited that very fear to get access to this house without having to force their way in. Whew! That's quite the story! The victims obviously will have gotten quite a fright, but at least they won't be in any great danger. The important thing now is to find this copycat criminal. On any other day, that'd probably be a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work today. Take a look around and you'll see what I mean. This criminal is clearly well-versed both in using music to commit crimes and in making a clean getaway. Not only did they stay off the muddy road to avoid leaving footprints, it looks like they were also careful not to bring any gadgets with so much as a trace of elemental energy. Evidently, they were intent on keeping even the most experienced investigators off their trail. Unfortunately for them, I'm one of the best trackers in the business. They're not about to get away with their little scheme on my watch. So basically, if we want to find the culprit, we just need to follow you on! Mm-hmm. As long as you can keep up. Since the culprit's trying to be cautious and low risk, I'll bet they left through an area with some vegetation for cover, but not so much that it would slow them down. Here, look at this. These tracks are superficial, but they definitely didn't occur naturally. Something heavy was being dragged this way, meaning we're headed in the right direction. Huh. Their pace has increased. Normally, people carrying a heavy load slow down as their journey goes on and they start to tire. 
Whatever's motivating them to speed up must be psychological. For instance, reaching the home stretch. Quit following me! Let's round him up. <laughs> Treasure hunting, a valiant endeavor. you? Where did you come from? Hmm. The evidence is conclusive. Okay. Confess and we'll go easy on you. My patience is running low, so why don't you do us both a favor, hmm? You kidding me? You think I'm scared of you? Perhaps not. But you should be. Curses. Seems like you're not all talk after all. But there's no going back now. Better up my game. Mercy! Have mercy! Oh, it's a little late for that. I've come this far. I might as well finish the job. I surrender! I surrender, please! I'll do whatever you say. Please have mercy. <laughs> Tell us everything. You have one chance. And I'm warning you. Don't make me ask twice. I won't, I swear. Um, you know, so... Lantern Rite's nearly here, and like a lot of people, I wanted to buy a few nice things. I know I'm with the treasure hoarders and everything, but... I don't really have any kind of experience with robbing people and whatnot, so I, uh, I don't have the guts to break into somebody's house. Wow, you're really going to complain to us about that? No, not at all. I'm just telling it how it is. Okay, continue. I racked my brains trying to think of what I could do, and eventually I remembered something from back when I was a kid. The bandits would blow their horn, and my grandma would grab us kids and run. I remember the tune, so I... I figured I'd try it for myself. I mean, just to see what would happen. At first, anyway, I seriously didn't expect that family to pack up and leave. But they did. And they just left all their stuff right there for the taking. It was too easy, I just... I couldn't resist. It was completely wrong of me, I know that now. I'll return everything that I took. It's all still in perfect condition, and it'll be like it was never gone. Please, give me a chance, huh? Let me make it right. Give you a chance, huh? Sounds to me like you'd rather strike some kind of a deal than spend Lantern right behind bars. Yes, um, yes. You know how to bargain, I'll give you that. It's just a pity that you didn't confess at the first opportunity. You'll have to take a walk with me. Once we've returned the goods, We'll find the owner of the house, and you can apologize to them in person. After that, I'll escort you to the Ministry of Civil Affairs. Yes, ma'am! You know, as a former victim of this kind of crime yourself, I doubt anyone understands the fear you inflicted quite as well as you do. Does your greed matter more to you than your fear? More to the point, if you can play a tune from memory, don't you think you should be capable of making an honest living? You mean... <laughs> That's enough hints for you. You'll have plenty of time to reflect on all of this yourself. 
There's not much left to wrap up, so I'll take it from here. Guess this is where I'll say goodbye. Hmm. What is it? Is there something else? I'm still not sure how you first got your hands on this information. So play it safe when you get back. Don't mention to anyone that you ran into me out here. You helped a lot with the investigation and arrest anyway, so it's perfectly fair for you to get all the credit. Just take it. It works better for me, too. See you when I see you. And happy lantern right. Galen's such a pro at this. With her taking it from here, it's as good as resolved. Whoosh! Random event, a strange melody, complete! Although, it's kind of a shame that we never got that treasure hoarder guy to play the melody again. Right? How could anyone not be? When we were chatting with Mr. Dvorak, music seemed like such a positive thing. And most music is, right? It can help us relax, feel all warm and fuzzy, recall happy memories, or even just think happy thoughts. Paimon never imagined that music could be used to commit crimes! Oh, really? Huh. Makes sense. <gasps> Paimon's musical understanding improves again! Well, anyway, now that everything's resolved, let's get back to Liyue Harbor. Paimon's still waiting for us with our random event rewards. Following me. Byron, we're back! Everything's all sorted! That's great news! Oh, please wait here a moment if you would be so kind. Lady Ning Wong instructed me to advise her upon your return. My greetings to both of you. Long time no see. No need to be so formal with us, Ningguang. We've known each other for a long time now. You must be super busy with all the preparations for Lantern Right. Don't mind us. On the contrary, I think it is those that I have known longest to whom I should extend the greatest courtesies. Alas, on a different day, I would invite both of you inside for some tea and a brief respite from your travels. But you're quite right. Trivial matters aside, there's no escaping the fact that we have a grand concert to organize. Once the performance itself is over, we'll then need to invite the representatives of the Iridescence Tour for a discussion on future collaboration opportunities. The financing arrangements alone could well entail many rounds of discussion. Simply put, there will always be work to do. Whoa, you're already thinking that far ahead? <laughs> Well, we can discuss more current affairs if you'd prefer. I trust you saw this year's Ming Shao Lantern at the docks when you arrived at the city? Yeah, it looked like a goose. Which Adeptus is it modeled on this time? Seagazer. I believe you're familiar with the name. Legend holds that he was free-spirited and easygoing. People described him as a cheerful soul and a loyal friend. On this marvelous lantern rite, we pray that the fallen heroes may be guided home. If the sound of music can flow like the rivers and streams into every corner of the land, perhaps the souls of those who have gone before us will hear the song of a new era. I wonder whether the melodies will be to their liking. Oh, they're gonna love them! I'm unsure of it! At least, if the guy you mentioned is anything to go by, the Adepti and heroes of the past sound like a positive and free-spirited cheerful bunch. They're sure to be open to new music. <laughs> well, let's hope so. I heard that you'll be going on a search with Ganyu to find the descendants of a fairy lady from a Fontaine legend. 
I'm sure this quest to uncover the truth behind an ancient story will turn into a most charming tale. Do share it with me, won't you? I couldn't bear to miss out. There's no such thing as pure freedom in this world. Even the wind cannot blow on forever. 